This is Resolute and the Resolute Men's Leadership Podcast. I'm Vince Miller, your founder and host, and today we're in a series on mentorship, discussing today the topic of how to build a mentoring contract. Welcome to the program. If this is your first time tuning in, well, then thank you for joining us. Our mission at Resolute is to disciple and develop men to lead. So if you're looking for content for your men's group or even your men's ministry, then you need to go to our website today at beresolute.org. If you want to follow us on any form of social media, go to Facebook or LinkedIn. You can follow us there. Or if you like to listen on your own feed, you can find us always in iTunes or in SoundCloud. But gentlemen, let's dive in. Today, I'm joined again by one of my good friends, Dr. Greg Borgon. Dr. Borgon is the president of Heart of the Warrior Ministries. He's worked with men for over 40 years. He has been heavily involved in mentorship over those years, and so I'm excited to welcome him to the program today. Greg, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Man, I am I'm I'm actually more pumped about this podcast than any of the others on mentoring that we've done. You know, we've talked about mentoring a little bit as it relates to our fear, pushing through those things mm-hmm. and stepping into it. Um, last time we talked about some real practical stuff, right? We talked about types of mentors and relationships. Maybe for just a second, can you recap that before sure. we get into this one? Um, there are intensive mentors who help build foundations in your life. There are occasional mentors who dress a specific need and then there are passive mentors who you probably have never met may not even be alive but every time you read something that they've written listen to something they recorded god feeds your soul so you have intensive mentors which are foundations more regimented in the process occasional mentors the time span of which will change depend upon the need and then you have passive mentors. Right, yeah, and these different kinds of relationships that we have in our life, whether we recognize them as mentors sometimes or not, you know, maybe the passive mentor, for example, mm-hmm. uh, they they provide us with different types of wisdom, different time frames, et cetera, et cetera. And we talked about a lot of that last time, and I thought if you, these guys that are listening today did not listen to that last podcast, they really need to go back to it. But today, we're going to get into the topic of the actual mentoring contract. I love that you call it a contract because sometimes we need to DTR, define the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And not just relationships that we have with other people. We're talking about a real structured spiritual relationship where there is a mentee and a mentor, and we're trying to go somewhere together, right? So that's what it sounds like a contract does. Give us a little bit of, before you dive into the contract itself, Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little history as to why you created this document specifically? Well, it was because I saw so many men floundering and I I would get repeated requests. uh, Would you invest in my life? And what they're really saying is, would you mentor me? Right. And I was mentored. Right. um, And I found the value of it. It was by J. Robert Clinton, who's still my mentor today. And there are others who have been my mentors. Erwin has certainly been an occasional mentor as well as a passive mentor. So I, so I have mentors in my life. But the idea is I, I, it's very hard to get your arms around because it's such a big term, right. mentor. Right. So I wanted to go ahead and bring it down to uh, the ground and say, here's specifically what mm-hmm. mentoring is about. And so in Heart of Warrior, I actually, phase three of Heart of Warrior is called The Guide, where I train men how to mentor, Yes. but secondly, how to be mentored. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about really a mentoring constellation. The fact is, is that God calls you and me to pass on to others what we've learned. So there's Mm -hmm. a, there's a pass down aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And some of us say, well, I, you know, I'm I'm not that mature or I haven't got my whole act together. Mm -hmm. There is always something that you have that God's given you, you can pass on to somebody else. Then there's mentoring up, right? where you're mentoring your boss or you're mentoring people that are in a more significant position of responsibility and offering some advice along the way. Then there's peer mentoring. Okay. That's where you're both involved. You've got something, Vince, to give me, Mm -hmm. which you already have over the course of our um, friendship. 
I have something to give to you. Yep. So it's a mutual sharing. Right. Peer mentoring, mentoring up and right. mentoring down. That's called a mentoring constellation. Got it. So now as we begin to kind of frame some of this up, yep. let's dive in deep to this contract. Yep. Yep. And I, I, I really love that you did this because it really helps to give us a guide for what this looks like. Yep. And I couldn't agree with you more. I think terms like training, even the word discipleship or mentorship often are too abstract for people. Mm -hmm. And like you've said in the very last podcast, it's easy to hit nothing when you're aiming for nothing, right? right. Like it really exactly. is easy. But now you're helping us to aim at something. So walk us through for your sure. particular contract, yeah. Greg. The idea here is, first of all, if you're men, if you're thinking about being mentored, one of the gifts, again, you can give the, the mentor that you're going to seek out is having done some preliminary thought in terms of, you know, what am I doing now? I need to keep doing. What am I doing now? I need to change. What am I doing now? I need to stop doing. What am I not doing now? I need to start doing. Thinking through what kind of a mentor do I really need and trying to be as specific as possible, which isn't always uh, realistic, but be as specific as possible. So number one, when you finally have this meeting that oftentimes the mentoree, by the way, uh, initiates the meeting. Uh, if you're waiting for somebody to see who, the, the capability in you, a mentor to come to you, that's not normally how it works. That's the exception to the rule. So as a mentoree, you need to seek that person out. So the first meeting is you want to jointly agree on the purpose of the relationship. In other words, you want to present the objectives. You've done some preliminary work. Here's the area that I need to be mentored in. And for a mentor, it's always good to ask the mentoree, what are your expectations? What do you hope to accomplish? What will constitute success at the end of our engagement? The second thing, set the criteria for evaluation. In other words, what will, be a, what, what will the successful outcome look like? How will you know the objectives have been accomplished? You, you need to have the mentoree describe what they hope to accomplish. Number three, determine the regularity of interaction. Mm -hmm should be a minimum of at least twice a month. Could be more depending on the needs of the mentoree and the availability of the mentor. It, but what I would do is give you a caution so you don't scare the mentor away. <laughs> you should begin with a three-month trial. And you should say, you know, let's evaluate this at the end of three months. And I'll let you know if I'm getting what I think I need. And you can let me know whether or not you're able to give me what I think I need. Yeah. And we could part if that's not the case, or we could continue on. Number four. Determine accountability parameters. Honesty, vulnerability, accountability, whatever else is required by the mentor and agreed upon by the mentoree. What accountability parameters will be applied? Number five, set up communication mechanisms. In other words, is it going to be email or is it going to be phone, face-to-face, -face, whichever is the most convenient. You can, you can actually mentor somebody at a great distance, and I've oh, done yeah. that. I get calls all the time from people I've mentored in the past. I haven't heard from in two or three years, and... They're bringing a concern to me or a question and ask me to get involved, and that's done by phone. It could be a combination of all of those, but at least have one face-to-face -face meeting hmm. per month in addition to a second or additional meeting by phone or email. Number, um, number six, clarify the level of confidentiality. What is shared on a personal level must remain confidential unless it's of a legal nature. For instance, if you're mentoring somebody, if there's an abuse of any kind or a crime, by law, you're required to report it. Mm -hmm. But you've got to lay out the, the parameters of confidentiality. Number seven, set the life cycle of the relationship. Three months for a preliminary time frame of who's already talked about, at the end of which each of you can evaluate the relationship. And if you're in agreement to continue, set an end date. Critical. Yes. Don't leave it open-ended. <laughs> Very good. Not to exceed six additional months, a total of nine months. That way you can release them and you can, as a mentor, decide, you know what, they probably going to need another three months. Right. But if you don't set that end date, it could be open-ended. All right, number eight. We've got a, just a couple more here. Evaluate the relationship from time to time. Huh. Recommend yeah. an evaluation every two to three months. And that means that the mentor says to the mentor, are you getting what you need? Yeah. Or the mentor says, you know what, um, I, I, I think we need to go in a little bit different direction. And especially when you're an occasional mentor based on needs rather than intentional, which is more prescribed. Right, right. Um, there are going to be some course changes. There are going to be some minor adjustments mm -hmm. that you need to do. And if you don't do the 
check in every two or three months. Are you getting what you need? Has this been helpful to you? Then you're, you're wandering around in the dark. Number nine, modify expectations to fit the real life mentoring situation. In other words, if an issue or concern arises that needs more focused attention, the mentor and mentoree should decide whether the parameters of mentoring need to be changed. Yep, good. And then number 10, bring the mentoring relationship to a close. Hmm. Celebrate the completion of the journey. Have the mentoree write about the experience and what was accomplished. Wow. That's and that's good. not only good for you, but it's good yeah. for them because they have to think through, all right, what did we accomplish? Yeah. So that's a mentoring contract. It may seem a lot, men, but... Trust me, when you put those boundaries and those parameters together, it makes the mentoring relationship much more meaningful, much more focused, and there's some degree of of reliability that it's going to end well. If you don't do these things ahead of time, then unrealized expectations will raise their head and there'll be disappointment because you didn't clarify these things. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think this is beautiful. And you, you're kind of like me in this, Greg. It's like if, if we have time, it's very valuable to us, right? You and me. And people do come to you and I often. I'm yeah. sure they come to you far more rapidly. And I know you're mentoring people all over the country. Uh, when people come to you, you have to decide whether or not you really want to do that. Like you have to decide it, even me. And I, because my time is valuable, I want to invest in where I feel it's going to be fruitful, Mm -hmm. not only for me, but for them, right? I've got to share a quick story. Yeah, go for it. We have some time here. Yeah, we do. When I was trying to seek out J. Robert Clinton, who he prefers to be called Bobby, to mentor, it was back in 1999. We were brought together at a leadership conference to determine how we're going to train leaders in the future. And and I was one of 62 people there. And Bobby Clinton was there, and I'd read everything he had written, and I thought, boy, if I could ever have this guy mentor me. <laughs> and so over the course of the three days, he finally came up to me based on conversation, and he said to me, he said, uh, uh, I want you to do something for me. He said, I want you to get my book on Bible-centered leadership and complete a 300-question exam and send me the results. He didn't say he was going to mentor me, but I wanted to be mentored. So I got his book. I filled it out. And it was on your knowledge of the Bible is what it was. Oh, wow. So I sent in the results. He wrote back and said, I'm going to give you a 100-question exam now on leaders of the Bible. Then it was followed up with a 50-question exam on geography of the Bible. What he was trying to do is determine where the start point was. I didn't know it at the time. I was getting aggravated. <laughs> so the fourth thing he did, he says, I want you to put a... Sounds Venn- like the Karate Kid, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I want you to put together a Venn diagram of your giftedness. I couldn't even spell Venn at the time. Right, right. So I got his book on how to do that, and right. I sent it to him. And finally, I had enough courage. After I sent the results, I finally sent an email to him, and I said, are you going to mentor me or not? He sent me a one-word answer, yes, and he's been my mentor ever since. Ah. So don't be thwarted, men, <laughs> by what some mentor might put you through. It is well worth it. Yeah, I love that. I, I'm sorry, but that sounds exactly like the Karate Kid. <laughs> 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 but I love it because, you know, really that story of Mr. Miyagi, <laughs> and, you know, and this kid who comes to him is a story of mentorship, isn't it? That's it's exactly it. It's, a, it's yeah. a very simple story of a mentor or driving a mentee toward greater performance, sometimes asking and inviting him or telling him to do things that are a little bit uncomfortable to himself, but in the end, make him better. See, that's the key. If your mentor is not making a little uncomfortable, they're not doing their job. Yeah, exactly. And I know, you you know, you're a master at making people uncomfortable, Greg. And I, I, I know that that may come off to some listeners as like a little awkward, but it's true. Greg really does have a very clear directional approach to life and sometimes greg you push guys and you push me to think very prescriptively about where we want to go and when you do that it makes us a little uncomfortable but it's exactly sometimes what we need to push through the fears let me let me just say this guys i you may need to listen to this podcast a couple of times but i can't agree more with greg on the fact that You need to have some sort of professional contract between a mentor and a mentee, regardless of who you are, 
sometimes the mentee is going to bring this into the relationship. That's okay. Yes. Because defining the relationship and the parameters there is very important. So as we close our time today, let me read to all the listeners out there a verse that I think is critical in this context. It's from Proverbs 13, verse 20. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Greg, thanks so much for being with us again today. And that's the show. Thanks for listening. As we close, I want to remind you that we have great content for your men's groups, excellent small group videos and participant handbooks that will empower the men of your church to lead and equip them to build the men around them. You got to check out our newest series. It's entitled Defeating Repetitive Sin for Men. Check it all out at bresolute.org, or you can just send me a direct email at info at bresolute.org. I'd love to speak with you guys. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this podcast, but please know that the time that we spent together today is worthless unless you choose to do something with it. So act on it. Do something right now today by getting off the bench and into the game. And I'll see you right back here next time for another edition of the Resolute Podcast. Mm -hmm.